In June 2013, a multi-beam survey was carried out near Brest in France. We will demonstrate how backscatter and water column data can support bathymetry processing. In this survey area, there are four seabed wrecks. The data from the Consberg 2040C multi-beam echo sounder was collected with Quincy and processed with Quincy Processing Manager, Fledermouse Geocoder using the Geocoder Toolbox and Fledermouse Midwater for the water, color de water Column Data Processing. The raw data is replayed using the Quincy Recorded Database files from the acquisition phase. These displays are set up in Quincy to demonstrate how the different data sources can be visualised. On the left, the plan view with the grid statistics. On the top right, the water column data. And in the bottom right, we can see the motion and refraction corrected bathymetry data. This part of the clip demonstrates how Quincy can fill a multi-resolution grid with bathymetry, average beam backscatter, and so-called time series beam backscatter. Later on in this clip, we will explain the difference between average beam backscatter and the beam time series in more detail. Have a look at the gridded bathymetry data, the gridded average backscatter and the gridded beam time series data. This explains the difference between the average backscatter and the beam time series data. Beam time series values are georeferenced on both sides of the beam and as such they provide a higher level of detail. Now let's generate the backscatter mosaic in Fledermouse Geocoder. FMGT can read the native Quincy data formats QPD and DB from the Quincy project. For building a mosaic we need both the DB and the beam for the beam backscatter observations and the QPD for the clean multi-beam footprints. Here is the mosaic. The observations are in DB. So let's use the same lower and upper limits as we used for building the mosaic grid statistics. Now simply export the mosaic to a georeferenced TIFF image. Start the Quincy Processing Manager and import the mosaic from FMGT. OK, let's now look at the data from the water column. From the Quincy console we can start Flader Mouse Midwater. FM Midwater also reads the data from the native Quincy database and QPD files. Data volumes for water column data can easily go as high as 20 times the bathymetry data volume. With this setting we can reduce the resolution, but let's go for the maximum resolution. The data is now loaded, so let's have a look at some of the water column data using the fan beam view. Just scroll over the sailed lines. The red points are the digitized depths that were generated by the 2040C echo sounder. But it also shows that there is data inside the water column. 